Hi, my name is John Barnack, and I want to thank you for plugging into this conversation today. And really what I want to share today is just a little bit about uh, my background, first and foremost, and then also how we became Team Inspire uh, underneath the real umbrella and our journey uh, on how we got here. So um, crazy times that we're in right now. There is a pandemic uh, still going on. And if you're like us, excuse me, during that pandemic, you did uh, a lot of self-reflection and some introspective work uh, about where you were at, where you were going, and you know, honestly, if you're on the right path to get there. And I would uh, consider, or have you consider that if you're here today, uh, you're looking for something. And you know, there's maybe this itch, or you, know, you got this feeling that maybe there's a better way to do real estate, right? And then maybe there's a better way to operate uh, in this industry. And you know, that's, that's a lot of what we felt. And what we found uh, with this company, I'll get into some more details later, uh, and there's tons of details all around me, uh, as you can see on this page here. Uh, what we found is uh, there absolutely is. Uh, to start with, uh, I got my start in real estate when I was 23 years old. I was a factory worker uh, before that, so uh, went straight to work right after high school. Uh, I figured that you know why would I go to school if I could just start making money right right away, and I got an entry position making about twenty bucks an hour. And you know honestly, uh, I thought I made it. Uh, you know twenty bucks an hour not too bad uh, for an eighteen year old with no bills. <laughs> so kind of living it up back then, and you know I bought a house, I bought a car. And I realized that you know, 50 grand a year uh, doesn't really go that far. And I started exploring some other options because I just you know, looked at that landscape, realized that that's not where I ultimately wanted, and wanted to end up uh, in my life. And I uh, went back to school because that's you know, what, we were thought, what we were taught. You go to school, you get a degree, uh, you get a better job, right? That's how, that's how you move up in the world. So you know, I was going to school. Uh, working on that while I was working full time at the factory, and uh, one of my best friend's moms, uh, she's a top producer here uh, in the area, uh, just heard overheard me one day uh, complaining about my job, and she asked me a very simple question. Uh, very thankful for the question, but she said, "Have you ever thought about going into real estate?" And you know, honestly, uh, I hadn't. Right? I mean, who thinks about that? <laughs> just like sitting around. I had a lot of questions, right? How, how, how do you make your income consistent, right? With it being commission work, um, where do you find your clients? Uh, you know, a lot of those basic questions that you might have looking at getting into an, an industry like that. And she, she said, uh, well, last year was an okay year for me. Uh, I made about 300 grand. And at that time, that, that was the most amount of money I'd ever heard uh, anyone uh, making right, in, in one year. I was like, holy cow, uh, that's remarkable. And the job that I was going for uh, through college, uh, the job I was looking to get into, uh, was going to pay me less than a third of that to start. So I, I made the decision, I dropped out of school, and I went and got my real estate license. And you know, within uh, just a few months, uh, I, I was working full time with her. I, I quit the factory. Everyone thought I was crazy. You know, I got the book thrown at me by my friends, my family, uh, co-workers, right? They all thought I was nuts, right? I had a job for life and, you know, job security, in my opinion, oxymoron. But I, you know, I really just looked at it and I weighed the, the possibilities. And I said, you know, if I go into real estate and if I uh, am not good at it or I don't make it or it's really just something that uh, doesn't appeal to me, uh, I could always find a job, right? I could always find a job. I could always get into something else. Uh, I never thought that would be an issue for me. <sighs> Excuse me. On the other hand, I felt like if I am good at it uh, or I do excel at it, I am able to produce consistent income and you know scale it like the way I, I wanted to and thought I could. Uh, I may not ever have to quote unquote work a job again. And you know I've been full time now for nine years. Um, extremely blessed uh, to have surrounded myself with uh, a lot of good people over the years and. Uh, you know, just very thankful uh, for where I'm at today and the opportunities that are in front of me. But uh, I took that leap of faith. <laughs> Everyone thought I was crazy. Um, 
and it was interesting because uh, I thought that was like the next thing, right? That's that's the next phase, and that's this is the thing that I'm going to do forever, and it's gonna it's gonna help me reach and accomplish all my goals. And you know, I did 13 transactions my first year, uh, so you know, not super crazy good, but not terrible either, right? And, and then completely do nothing. But what I what I noticed, uh, and I noticed this pretty quickly, right? When I when I was working with um, with that top producer who brought me in. Uh, I love the uh, amount of money that she made, and that's what initially attracted me to the business. Uh, but I didn't necessarily love the way that she had to earn it. Uh, you know, day in, day out, uh, kind of rat wheel grind, right? Nonstop, never stopping. And in my mind, I just, uh, you know, I was uh, thinking to myself, I was like, I know that there's people that make this much money, uh, if not, are making a whole lot more money that aren't working like this for it. You know, I just, I, I knew that there had to be a, a way to do something like that. And you know, what, I, what I started hearing was you know, real estate investing, right? It's a good way to build wealth. It's a good way to um, you know, start accumulating assets and, and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, cool. So I started going to networking groups, uh, invested in some education early on uh, so I could start getting some, like, some of the fundamentals and stuff like that. And you know, through one of those networking groups, uh, I met uh, probably one of my most impactful mentors, uh, who's now my partner, uh, and he sat me down and he showed me the cash flow quadrant. And if you don't know what the cash flow quadrant is, uh, I'd highly recommend go, uh, you know, do some deeper research on it and look at it and explore it. But uh, gave you a high level overview of it and what really shifted my thinking and, and belief of what was possible. Uh, on the left hand side. You've got uh, actively earned income, and top left is employees. Uh, bottom left is self-employed, right? And employee, uh, you know, that's like the, the the weakest position that you could be in, right? Your your income and your time and almost everything, like that car you drive, the house you live in, uh, how many days you could you take on vacation, uh, almost everything uh, is determined by someone else, right? Because you're an employee. Uh, self-employed, you've got a little bit more control. And really, that was what was extremely attractive to me uh, when I first came into the industry because I was like, all right, cool, I get to go create the results that I want, right? No longer paid per hour, get paid per result. And in my mind, it's like there's no limit to the amount of results that I could create. So, I, you know, self employed, still actively earning, right? So other realtors, uh, doctors, attorneys, uh, potential to make more money than you can as an employee, but on that side, no matter if you're on the top or the bottom over there, you're still limited, right? Because you're one person and there's only so much one person could do. So, and that's where Mar that's where uh, my mentor was, right? She was in that uh, self-employed, uh, performing at a high level, but honestly, how long could you keep that up for? Or how long would you wanna keep that up for? Uh, one of our favorite questions uh, that we like to ask people in really just looking at the landscape of this industry uh, do you know a retired real estate agent? And you know, almost almost half of the people we ask that to kind of laugh because uh, you really don't. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of people that just went through, had a successful real estate career and retired solely off of that, right? If you start peeling back the onion, they might have invested in some assets or um, you know they have a spouse that has a pension plan, uh, whatever it might be, but the you know the the kind of uh, theme is that real estate agents work forever, and some people you know say that they love to do it. Uh, that's great, right? Do it for the rest of your life. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Uh, my goals were were different, right? I wanted financial freedom. I wanted to uh, not be tied to actively earning my income, um, and, and I wanted just to you know honestly just do the things that I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. And I never wanted money to be an issue, right? I wanted financial freedom. And I, and I think that might be one of the reasons why you're here as well. Uh, at least if that is one of the reasons uh, why you're here, then we're definitely like minded in that. Uh, and if not, that's okay, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, not everything in this video or with my story is going to appeal to you, but it might be one of the things that we already have in common, right? We're searching for that financial freedom. When he got to the right hand side of the quadrant and he started talking about passive income and residual profit right from either being a business owner owning a business system uh, and then leveraging people inside that system to scale to an unlimited right uh, amount I mean that's a 
he, he said those words. He said unlimited income potential, and my eyes lit up. Right, almost like when uh, she told me that she made three hundred grand a year. I was like, oh, I just kind of relived right that moment in my life. It's like holy cow, unlimited income potential, right? Uh, and the thing about scaling right inside of a system or inside of a business is as you continue to scale and grow, uh, the income grows, but the work doesn't necessarily grow at the same rate or in the same proportion that the income does. So you have the opportunity to scale your income and grow your income um, exponentially faster and more uh, than you could, right, if you, if you were actually just physically doing the work. Um, John D. Rockefeller said, you know, I'd rather have 1% of what 100 people produce than 100% of what I could produce on my own. Uh, and he's probably, I think he's like one of the wealthiest people right on the planet. Um, <laughs> but right, so that leverage, right, wins that game over there. And then in the bottom right, you have investors. And right, investors just understand how to use their money or leverage their money or assets uh, to then go, get out, go out and get more. Or right, collect rental properties, uh, for our case, right, because we're in real estate. But as soon as I started learning that and got that concept, I was like, holy cow right i've got to get to the right hand side of the quadrant well if we take just a general look right at not just our industry but uh, america as a whole or you know the world as a whole 95 percent of the people live on that left hand side of the quadrant right 95 percent of the people are actively earning their income right and live in, uh, over there uh, while five percent of the people are on the right hand side and 5% of the people uh, are earning that residual profit and passive income from their businesses or from their assets. Now, conversely, 95% of the wealth lies with that 5%, and only 5% of the wealth lies with that 95%. So you could see like right off the bat, just even just with that concept right there, the goal is to get to the right hand side of the quadrant, right? If you truly want that financial freedom, at least at that type of level where money's not an issue, right? And you don't have to go actively chase it down um, every single time. So we got together, that concept completely blew my mind. And it, you know, it caused me to really, uh, again, just kind of reflect where I was at. And uh, I ended up leaving where I was at. It was a traditional firm um, and you know, they, they had the traditional model. I'll get into some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages uh, that we saw personally uh, just with the traditional business model. But I, I left there uh, again. It was like another uh, almost like reliving uh, the past. Like when I left the factory, uh, everyone threw the book at me there uh, again because uh, I was leaving a brand uh, that uh, was supposedly getting me more business and uh, I wouldn't be able to make it right with the with like a new no name company and uh, the market I was going into was too tough and right just uh, like a common theme right I hear this over and over again but um, we decided to I decided to leave uh, and then me and my partners we decided to uh, build and create our own model right we we looked at do you want to buy a franchise right and do we want to like get into one of those models um, really Keller Williams was the only one that was somewhat appealing to us uh, just because uh, they had the profit share, right? And, and they were they were huge, right? They're, they're winning the distribution game uh, at a really high level. Um, so they had a lot of system and infrastructure and set up and uh, whatever it might be. And, and we had very big ambitious goals, right? We wanted to go, uh, we wanted to go nationwide, right? We wanted to go public. Uh, we wanted to do really, really big things, right? Me and my partners. Uh, but we, we kind of felt a little uneasy about profit share. Right, we, we liked the idea and the concept made a lot of sense to us, giving something back to the agents who do uh, so much of the hard work to build the businesses or, or grow the revenue in the businesses and maintain right, the income that's coming in. Uh, but again, right, you know, a retired real estate agent, oftentimes they're left with nothing at the end of their career. So you know, we, we liked that, the direction that was going, but you know, we decided to take it one step further. And you know, honestly, we, we thought we were way ahead of the curve. Right? We, we thought we were coming out with, with the next best thing since sliced bread right? in the real estate industry. Um, you know, back in like 2015 when we started, or 24, I think it was 2015, yeah, 2015, when we started, uh, you know, we wanted to share revenue uh, with our agents. We thought that only made sense. Hey, if they're gonna help us generate revenue, if they're gonna help us grow the company, why not give them a piece of that back? Right? Why not really incentivize them 
uh, to help us grow this thing, but also allow them to build a business underneath our wing, right? Without having to take the risk that we took. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Uh, we put up about fifty thousand uh, dollars to get our company up and running. So let let's put that in there uh, so that they have the same opportunity, uh, or even like a better opportunity, right? Because they wouldn't have to take the same risk that we did. Uh, we also wanted to share equity. Uh, now we were right small, independent uh, here in Illinois. We, uh, you know, who knows how long it, it would take us to go public. But we were like, dude, once we get there, we're sharing equity, right? We want our brokers, uh, and we had partners in our name uh, for a very, very uh, strategic reason, or a very intentional reason, I should say. Uh, we felt, honestly felt like every single person that works with us is a partner, right? And, and we think that that's probably the most effective and, and the most beneficial relationship you can have in any type of work environment, right? We shouldn't, you know, we never like that, uh, you know, broker owner and then agent, it's, dude, we're, we're all equal. We're all in this together. We're all looking to build something great and do something uh, awesome, right? With, with our lives and with our businesses. And how do we give the agents the best chance? So we built that model. Like I said, we thought we were way ahead of the curve uh, on that. And you know, we grew it uh, to a decent size here in Illinois. We um, uh, did that for six years, right? Six years on our own. We were independent. Uh, dealing with everything that comes along with being an independent uh, office. If you if you run an office before on your own, or if, if you're currently running an office on your own, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Uh, getting it started, uh, and then also you know the effort and the energy that goes into uh, growing it, but also maintaining it, and then you know managing all the systems and stuff like that. Uh, you know we did that uh, for six years, and then you know when the pandemic hit, we we honestly we took a look in the mirror. And we had to really do an honest assessment of where we were at and look at where we still wanted to go and really, you know, swallow our pride and we had to eat some humble pie and we came up with, the, you know, we came to the conclusion that we weren't the right people, right? And we didn't want to be those people that were going to uh, build a national infrastructure and scale uh, you know what systems would it take? You know how do we take a company public? Um, you know what what was involved in doing all of that, and why? Right? Why why do all of that stuff on our own? And what we decided to do was, you know, why don't we look out into the the space and, and let's try and find a, a company that we could partner with, someone that was similar enough and like minded enough. Uh, shared the same values, right? And had the same culture, uh, built their company for the same reasons, right? Wanting to see the agents really succeed, right? Wanting to see the agents, uh, you know, end up with something at the end of their career, something tangible, something saleable. Um, and what we found was like, uh, you know, like a plug and play system that we could just really get into and, and scale, right? And, and scale and focus on the things that we're really good at. Uh, we looked at eXp. And you know, we were never 100% comfortable going with the XP. And honestly, I'm the type of person that you know, I believe in you know, what you put out is what you get. And you know, really, if, you, if you're here today, right, you got that feeling that there might be something better out there, just like we did uh, before we made the switch, you know, th there's a reason you're here, right? There, there's a reason why this information got to you. There's a reason uh, why you're on this site uh, not up to me, right, to decide what that reason is. That, that's completely up to you. And uh, if you're open to exploring and, and if you're open to seizing the opportunities uh, that come in front of you, because that's, I, I believe you put things out there, those things come back to you. And then it's all just a matter of if, you know, are you open and are you willing to seize those opportunities? So uh, I, I would have you consider that, it, you know, if you're here, you're here for a reason. And if you stay this long, you stay this long for a reason. But you know, we were putting it out there, right? That that's what we were looking for, and that's what we wanted to do. Uh, and it, it just this company, real, fell into our lap. And you know, when when I looked at the website, my partner found it first, and then he sent it to me. Uh, when I looked at the website, I was like, "This is a no-brainer, right?" I, I mean, they they structured their revenue share similar to the way that we did uh, for the same exact reasons. Uh, to match their culture and match the support systems that they have there, the way that they want to grow their culture. 
um, technology based, right? Everything is like instantaneous, right? Proprietary information uh, changing, right? Bringing a lot of systems and tools to the industry that's causing disruption, that's causing change. Uh, and they were already in you know 36 states uh, and Canada. So you know for us uh, and equity. Ooh, I almost skipped over the biggest part, equity, right? So and the opportunity to earn equity and earn equity uh, in a rising, right, a publicly traded rising company for doing the things that we were already doing. The same thing that boggles my mind the most is, um, you know, I go that, you know, I can go there as a producing agent. Uh, and what I love is they reward producers uh, so you know so generously that right they want uh, those producing agents to come over so they get the the bulk and the lion's share of those um, uh, of that type of reward. But you know you go there and you're already producing right you're already generating uh, commissions right doing what you're doing. Uh, but here you just get rewarded right for doing that very competitive split low cap. Uh, in fact, there's an the opportunity to earn. Uh, a lot, if not the majority or the most or all of the cap uh, that you pay the company, you get to earn that back, right? You can you can get that back um, with rewards and bonuses and stuff like that. So all these things, right? The the revenue share, the equity, the opportunity to literally get in at the ground floor, um, the technology, the culture, the mindset, right? all these things just completely lined up with with who we were and what we were looking to do, and. It, it was easy, right, for us to make that decision once we found this company and talked to leadership. Now, overnight, we went from being in one state to 36 states and Canada, so international, right, like that. Overnight, we started earning equity, right, and building equity in, in a rising company, publicly traded rising company. Uh, overnight, we were able to offer 10 times the resources uh, that we could ever offer on our own uh, to all of our broker partners. Uh, it was you know overnight. It was like a night and day opportunity. Again, a plug and play system that we could just you know plug ourselves into, and then we were able to scale quickly, right? And we're growing fast right now, right? Uh, most of our team is here in Illinois. We're qu quickly growing into several other states, and, and we're looking to go nationwide, right? So we still have the same goals. We still have the same ambitions. Uh, we're just looking for more of the right people that are looking for a similar opportunity to partner with and also show them what we've done uh, to get to where we're at, help them grow their businesses in turn, right? That helped us grow our businesses. I think it was Zig Ziglar, yeah, who said, uh, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll ultimately end up with what you want. So, uh, you know, that's where we're at. And if there was an opportunity for you to, um, you know, if there's an opportunity for you to have all the benefits of ownership without taking any of the risks and having any of the liability, right? That's the other thing too. Overnight, all of our risk, I shouldn't say all of our risk, that's not fair. Uh, most of our risk was gone, right? All of our liability gone, overhead was gone. Um, if there was an opportunity uh, for you to have all the benefits of ownership with none of the pitfalls, right? Would you be interested? If there was an opportunity for you to scale a team of independently producing agents, right? One of the things we saw in the industry teams and some people are like I never want to build a team well I wouldn't want to build a traditional team either right because that's still me being self-employed and having to continually churn and burn to keep that team running here what we focus on is independently producing team members right how do I help people become independently successful uh, and then how do we help them scale independently successful teams uh, and then develop leaders around that. So if there's an opportunity to do those types of things, to earn equity for what you're already doing uh, in a company that's rising quickly, uh, an opportunity to go uh, international, right, and have, take your business from where you're at right now to international uh, pretty much overnight. Opportunity to uh, leverage uh, the license that you already have to start creating multiple streams of income, building long-term wealth, right? W would you not explore that? And you know it's okay if it's not if it doesn't interest you if it's not something that you know, like excites you if it's not something you're passionate about it's okay right um, it, it, it's it, it's just that's it's just okay right with where you're at and what you're trying to do um, 
everyone has different goals and ambitions and dreams. And honestly, we're, we're not looking for people that are on the fence. We're not looking for people that um, you know, aren't 100% sure. We're not looking for toe dippers, right? We're not looking for people that say, ah, I'm, you know, I wanna try this and see if it works. No, we're looking for the people that wanna build wealth. We're looking for the people that wanna build and scale residual profit. Uh, we're looking for people that want to be leaders, right? We want to, we're looking for people that want to cause disruption in an industry that, in my opinion, uh, has been broken uh, for a long time and is changing quickly. So the proposition and what, what, what I'm going to propose to you right now, uh, join the team, right? Especially if you've been here this long, right? Click on the join button down there. Uh, let's get started. Let's get busy, right? Let's start building and let's start helping you build and create your wealth and your residual profit uh, with our business model. Um, and again, if it's not for you, uh, no worries, right? Thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate you getting into there, uh, getting into the video uh, and, and hanging out this long and hearing my story. Um, there's tons of stuff, right, that uh, not only real offers, but our team offers. Uh, I'm not going to get into all that uh, on this call, but I'll definitely uh, be willing to share that information with you. Uh, some of the proprietary things that our team is doing uh, to help you build a business uh, and hit those goals and dreams that you're looking to do. So, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. I know how valuable that asset is. Uh, you know, the older I get, uh, the more I realize uh, time is the only thing right, we don't get more of. So. You gave it graciously today. Uh, you heard my story, you heard where I came from, uh, how I got to where I'm at, how we got to where, I'm at, where we're at. Uh, and again, we're just looking for more like-minded people to keep making a bigger and bigger impact uh, in this industry, uh, impacting realtors' businesses, uh, and then helping other realtors uh, impact other realtors who impact other realtors, right? That are really gonna make a difference uh, and cause change in an industry that I believe severely needs it right now. So thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to chatting soon.